The best way to prepare for a video like this is to use the product the way it was meant to be used for at least 24 hours and then the script tends to write itself. I have the best job. Hello YouTubers, this is Anubafar. It's rare that the prep for a video review incorporates and requires this much research and collaboration. So first, we have Moist Noodle and Tumblerino, and they get a big thanks for the extra fine detail that I needed to add to this video. Neither they nor I present ourselves today as experts in aviation, flight historians, or as real pilots. There are some out there who are or who may fancy themselves as such, but we are not that. Second, we will discuss VR because yes, of course, I am aware that playing DCS in VR when available is better. I have VR and I use VR, but for the purposes of the video today, visually, the TV captures better, so this was a deliberate choice. Constructive comments, please. Thank you in advance. We begin. Along with covering Star Citizen development, I also cover simulation gear, so when Verpal reached out and offered to test the pre-production version of the new AH-64 Collective, I was excited. They also shipped a production version of the spring-based counterbalance. That thing is 19 euro and I'm going to say that it shouldn't be seen as an optional piece of equipment. That thing is that good and it changes the experience so much. I plan to do a review of it fully in the future but for now I'm just going to say gold star add to cart. No brainer. Moving on, AH-64 module in DCS was released around 2022, but before that the community had been asking for a good Apache collective. The current Boeing AH-64 traces its roots back decades, and it's been able to evolve through conflicts in recent history. It has so many unique features that come together to make it lethal, including its sensors and its weapons. Now having spent literal hours flying it, it occurred to me that a pair of these let loose on the battlefield are totally OP IRL. You barely need to look for targets targets and they're basically highlighted like some kind of IRL wall hack. Paint it to stand out and then the CPG simply needs to look at the target, aim and release some of the weapon systems and then the target's serviced. But it makes sense that all of these systems also come with a higher workload on the crew too. Many systems needed to be accessible in an instant and there was simply no room for all of these on one grip. So what sounds silly actually worked. If one grip is too small, why not attach a second grip? <laughs> The grip is really long, literally the length of two grips, so my first observation is that I needed to remodel my mount further back. On the motion system, it's physically as far back as possible without touching the motion actuator. I even moved my seat closer to the pedals and decided to extend the cyclic the same distance. Verpal has redesigned their mounting system to account for these changes, and as I'm using a Cubic Motion Monster Tech mounted platform, some of the modules that I used needed to be lengthened as well. Now that these adjustments to the position were made, flight could occur, but bindings were the next blocker. Physically, the grip is like other Verpal products, the same connector with the same aluminum twist collar. No flex, no creaking, the buttons and levers are of great quality with a nice clicky tactile feeling. On the subject of bindings and buttons, there are 44 of them if you include the single binding on the collective grip. Binding 1 shows up as the metal turbine lockout on the collective base, 2 through 6 are the FCR scan, 5-way castle, 7 through 11 are the FCR mode, 5-way hat, 12 is the cursor button, 13 through 17 are the site select 5-way hat, 18 is a single button cursor select, 19 is the front trigger, 20 is a single button QUED search, 20 through 23 are the FCR continuous and single, 24 is the pinky on the front grip, and the last binding on the mission control grip. 25 through 27 are the boresight three-way rocker, 28 and 29 are the two-way neutral off switch for the searchlight. And I have some feedback about this a little bit later. 30 through 34 are the searchlight five-way, 35 is the yellow covered jettison button, more feedback on both of the covered switches later. 36 through 38 is the NVS three-way, 39 through 41 is the stabilator three-way, 42 is the covered trigger on the bottom grip, 43 is the red covered chop button, 44 is the pinky button and the last binding on the flight control grip. In the description of this video, you're going to have a link to a Google Sheet with a complete breakdown of the bindings. Each has the actual binding name in the DCS menu, the binding label on the grip, where the binding is physically, and the type of binding that it is. And that should get you up to speed in a fraction of time. So the first feedback for the bindings is as follows. Searchlight operation in DCS has three bindings which are stow, off, and on. Because the switch is a two-way dead man with a neutral off, there appears to be no simple way to just bind this in DCS. This may have been better to be a three-way switch with a binding in the off position 
and the switch may have been better as a captive instead of dead man, meaning you switch towards on and it stays there. The second feedback is for the covered switches. DCS has a binding to arm and a binding to release, and that's for chop and jettison. Simply flipping open the cover and pushing the button will not release because normally the action of flipping the cover would first arm and then pushing the button would be release. The solution to this may have been to put a micro switch on the two covers. This might be a limitation by the number of available buttons that the hardware can see. And please, if some of you in the comments have interesting macro solutions to these, please post them up so that we can all learn. So what else is there to say really? If you currently or want to fly an AH-64, then this truly is the perfect addition to your setup. One key factor in immersion along with sight, sound, and motion is feel. If you look down in VR and the buttons are where they should be, it's good. If you look down IRL and the buttons are where they should be, that's also good. I've invited Moist Noodle to visit the studio in the near future, and with that visit, and with the hardware that I have in the basement, I plan to produce a bunch of content where we embark on missions together. The catch here is actually quite cool though, because we can both be in the same server in VR, on our own motion platforms, streaming from the same location. Something about this idea just seems fun, and I haven't seen it done before, so we're going to do it. Always looking for new ways to inform you and to entertain. As for the product, high quality construction, a faithful reproduction in the spirit of the original and I didn't even mention the RGB but it's there if you need it and it's also multi-zone. I've invited Chris back as well from the video Real Pilot Fake Helicopter. He wants to test Apache and I'm really interested to see what he can do in it and what he thinks of the 5 DOF system in VR. So thanks very much for spending your time with me. Please share the video where it should be shared. The product is great. Fly safe.